Okay, and hand it over, hand it over to uh, Betty. So take it away, Betty. Thank you. Thanks very much, Gordon, and uh, thanks very much for the welcome. Good morning, everybody. Um, let's just get going on this. And as you'll see there, the talk this morning is on our new BYOD toolkit. Now, um, I've already been introduced, so I don't really think I need to dwell on this slide at all. But when you're looking back, there are all our contact details for Just Legal. Um, so please uh, do um, do you know do contact us. I've now managed to switch on my video, so um, you poor soul should be able to see me in a full Technicolor now. So if we just um, move on, so as I say, our contact details there, our website, lots of information on there. I'm sure many of you have visited it before. Please do so again. It's, there's a lot of useful stuff on there for you. Now, this morning, our BYOD toolkit. I thought a useful starting point was this quote from the Information Commissioner's um, guidance on BYOD. You'll see the URL at the bottom there of the quote. Have a look at that guidance in conjunction with our own guidance. It will help you greatly because your main area is going to be data protection that you will be dealing with when you're dealing with um, BYOD. And of course, you are already dealing with it in your college. You already allow access via email from home computers, etc., to certain sections of your um, your your infrastructure. So you know you you are already doing this. But three and ten, as you'll see there, have guidance on how devices um, should be used in a BYOD capacity. Um, it is a concern. It is coming more to the fore, as you will know from all the press and from what your your staff and students are asking you um, for in your in your colleges and universities. Oops, sorry, I'm flicking on one too many. Right, when you look at our website, um, you will see the. This is what our BYOD toolkit looks like. We recognize the need to have um, a toolkit. If your college or if your students, your staff, if you're handling personal information, um, whether it be on own devices, um, if it is the college's information, you are responsible for it. You are the, the um, data controller. Likewise, if you're permitting um, using mobile phones for um, the likes of work with students, um, again, you have e-safety concerns there as well. And it is basically I would say to you, very much a bringing your staff and, and students on board with this. It's a people thing. The, the devices have been allowed around for quite some time now. It's a question of you in your colleges making sure that the staff and the students know what they have to do with them. Um, so we have four uh, units at the moment in our toolkit. Um, if you go to our website, I think Lindsay, who's here with me, I think she's already put up the, the URL, but it is, it, it is on the slides as well, um, and that's it. So I'm now going to actually just go through what the main areas, what these four items um, will do, I hope, to, to help you. And again, just please chip in with questions if, if you have any, etc., as we go through. Now, so what is actually in the toolkit? Now, the first two um, items that you would see on the toolkit were the staff uh, item and the one for the paper for students. What we are looking at here in these papers is where is your risk? What is the, what is the liability? Can your college or university be held legally liable? And that's basically. Um, what it's all about, legal, legal liability for the actions of your employees and your um, students. And 
I think that as you probably all know from various other talks in this area, yes you can be, you can be held legally liable, um, but there are ways of lessening your, the likelihood of being liable. Um, I think that we need to be realistic here and realise that you're not going to prevent everything that goes on, but just making sure that you, you have covered as much as you can and minimised your risk. So each of these, if I, uh, they, they give an overview of what the legal issues are and they all have scenarios and suggested actions. Now, I think that these are useful if you have to put a case to senior management for doing or not doing BYOD in your institution. These background papers will help you when making your case and that, that is uh, the purpose of it. And they may all help you, they may also help you think about where you stand in the, the, the risk spectrum. Some colleges are more, um, you know, they see things as less risky than others. Everyone has their own uh, strategy and approach to risk and we uh, can't decide that one for you. All we can do is give you some information on it. So, as I say, useful background for the, the um, decision makers. So if I move on, uh, just to show you an example, for example, this is just a small bit at the start of um, the, the staff mobile devices. Opening up the system will result in loss of personal or confidential data. I think that, that if you are allowing staff to access um, your systems and the information on them from home, the chances are something will slip out of the net and, and it is increased with using their own uh, mobile devices. So what we've done here is just put forward the best case scenario which is what you um, have to think about in your college and the worst case. Now you can see here that I put down something that I hope you would never get. Um, to the stage that a substantial monetary pe penalty for breach of data protection would be put on you. That is really not um, the end of the spectrum that, that you're hoping will happen to you. But um, you do need to have uh, policies and practices in place and discussions with your staff and students, uh, sorry, with your staff. Um, bring them on board as to how you're going to handle it. Always remembering that staff have, when they're using their mobiles, they want their own privacy as well. You want your items to be protected, but the personal stuff that they've got on their mobile, they also want that to be protected from the college eyes. So that is a good starting point for agreeing um, procedures with, with your staff. But that is an example of what you will find in the staff a, um, paper. This is an example, going to the next slide here, of what you will find in the student paper, but you will also find in the staff paper, you'll find a blocks on what is the risk, an example of the particular risk and the action that you should be taking. And, um, if I do allow you time to just have a quick read of this, um, you know, this one we're talking about offensive or illegal material with, um, you know, malware or perceived anonymity, etc. This will happen in your college and probably already has happened and you should have um, already have procedures in place in, in your college and you should have the um, appropriate security and I think that, you know, you, you size uh, Janet, they are the, um, they are the people to speak to, you know, with regard to the technical side of things to help you with that and of course um, your RAC um, should also be able to point you to some good resources technically wise to, to help things. Um, but it is basically ensuring that your systems are up to date. Um, and that you're educating, trying to educate your users on behaviours and what they should do. And the, the final thing, act quickly in all of these areas whenever you have an issue. Um, really 
bring it, bring out very rapidly, you know, get it off there and then deal with the consequences, you know, your, your disciplinary procedures afterwards. But the first thing in most cases is get it off your system if you can and then um, handle it from, from there on in. Or of course, alternatively, if you have a serious um, incident involving, for example, child pornography, I, I would, you know, if you're in that spectrum, it really is a police. That one definitely is a, a matter for the police. But you will see from, you know, those two first papers should give you all the background that you need for the legal side of it, not the technical side. There are people um, much better qualified than, than we are at JISC Legal to deal with that for you. Now, the third paper there, which um, is the smallest one actually of them all, but I'm afraid it's still, I think it's four sides. Um, but that's risk liability and mobile devices. That that is affectionately known as the pink paper in in our um, our office here because um, what you'll see is that we have taken some scenarios and we have agreed. Um, you know, what we at JISC Legal think is the least risky and what is the most, and it goes from pink to red for each of them. Um, your main issue is going to be data protection and compliance with the Data Protection Act for personal data, but also remember that you will have confidential data. Many of your staff may be working on merger information on staff reductions, all of these staffing issues, all of these sorts of things. And you may find that there are some uh, aspects of, be the, of work that possibly, if you feel your security isn't up to scratch, it's just not suitable to be allowing access to via a, a BYOD solution. Um, if there is particularly sensitive um, issues that you are dealing with. So it goes from not doing it at all to fully open and what are the risks if you do go fully open. We look at equality, for example, which is where you know, if you're looking at accessibility for your users, for your students, then um, BYOD is a great solution for them. Um, and the more open the better, probably, as far as students are concerned. But the main area of risk is looking after personal or confidential data. So the toolkit tells you what the, the legal risk is, what the legal liability is, and points you as to where, where do you sit in the, the risk spectrum, how much risk are you prepared to, to take, and then likely outcomes if things go wrong. And this is a, a short one to um, to help you just identify quickly um, those areas and that, as I say, is an example. Um, but the main thing, I think, is a, have a look at those first. And then, once you have done all of that, you then go on to um, what you probably the one that you're most keen on in your colleges to get something in place is our policy template, I would suggest. Um, this, we've decided that this is a living document. So, you know, if you do have any comments, areas we've missed out, uh, or areas that you think we can improve, we are very, you know, we would like your feedback on it because you are the user in, in the college. We, we, we would like to think that you'll be using it as a starting point for you. When we were preparing it, we geared it towards staff, basically, because that is the main, from a legal liability point of view, the staff is the main area of concern because your college can be held liable for what their staff what your staff do. In some circumstances, if you're giving students maybe for research purposes or something, if they do have access to personal data that's not their own, then obviously you are responsible for what students do. Students need to be told about e-safety. Um, they need to be told about their behavioural responsibilities, all of those things, and all of those policies should, 
you should already have policies in place for all of that and you should make sure that they're BYOD friendly is an, you know, and, and include um, own device use. Uh, so it's geared towards staff, but you can adapt the wording, take out what you like, put in, you know, it's all there to give you ideas of areas that you should be covering. And it covers the main areas to consider. Um, as I've said, it's not going to guarantee that you are never liable, but it is a, goes a good way to show that you are taking BYOD seriously, you're taking device use seriously in your, your college. And I think most importantly for yourselves, it does give exam some sample statements for you to use. Um, so if I move on now, finally, to, to for example, this is the, the security bit of it, um, secu you know, section four of it, um, the e-safety of staff IT users. Now, each section has a statement that says something along the lines of here, you know, depending on what it is. This section should set out the college e-safety requirements with regard to own device use. And there we have given three um, statements which you can use all, use none of them, um, adapt them to suit the policy titles that you have in, already in place, um, you, you know, make, make sure that uh, it covers how your college is going to approach matters. But what we at Just Legal hope is that it's giving you um, food for thought and some sample statements in order to, to develop to suit your own uh, what's actually happening in your college. And really, I think that that was actually all I wanted to say on the introduction to a, you know, it was really just to let you know the a BYOD toolkit is out there. It is available for you. Um, we do like feedback. We like questions at JISC Legal because it all informs us to help make it better. Um, and we have plenty of, um, other material on our website that would help you tie, you, you know, helps tie it all in together. We have a wider mobile technologies uh, section on our website as, as well. And I think at that point, I'm just going to leave it there and I hope that that has at least introduced um, this for you. And I'll maybe hand back to uh, Gordon to, to see whether there are you know, if there are any questions arising from what I've said. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks very much, Betty. Um, yeah, terrific as always. I, I always find that just legal are just amazing with the um, resources that they come out with and the information that they come back with as well. And I send them emails on behalf of, for instance, the heads of IT uh, and so on. If you do have um, some some questions, if you've got a mic. Um, I've left the mic uh, out for sort of about five people talking at once, but obviously I don't want you all talking at once. Um, if you want to uh, ask a question, you can either type it into the chat into in the bottom pane, uh, bottom left hand side, or you know just sort of raise your hand um, and um, talk into the microphone if you've got one. So I'll um, just keep quiet while anyone wants to consider what they want to uh, uh, to ask. Thanks, Robert. Um, there's, there's one that I'll ask uh, Betty. The, um, one of the main users I, I see, one of the main uses I see of um, uh, certainly mobile devices, mobile phones, um, is perhaps the recording of evidence. Um, and I know this probably rings true with um, you know people in the uh, organisations where they're doing apprenticeships or they're you know, recording. Um, you know the, the evidence of hairdressers or you know carpenters or whatever the, the skills sort of things they might be doing. Um, if a, a member of staff records video or um, photos as evidence, are they allowed to do that? Right, Gordon. In my view, yes. There is nothing to stop them doing that, but 
there, there is always a legal but. Um, what would come into play there would be data protection. And basically, under data protection, any recording you do, any recording of personal data, which images of, of uh, students and images of performances, etc., would might be um, or might involve a personal information, then you have to do it with consent. The students need to know what is happening, um, what's going to be done with the recording, where it's going to be held, how long it's going to be kept for, all of these um, basic things that apply to a you know, to all your other data protection, all your other personal data that, that the college would be handling. Yes, it can be done. It has to be done fairly and lawfully. And a way of doing it fairly is, is there a purpose in doing it? Um, if you have a legitimate purpose for doing it, if you have the consent of the, the those involved, then there is no reason why not. The sort of safeguarding sort of issues, anything uh, around that at all? You know, that in terms of a, a student, perhaps on a staff member's phone? Um, you know, how does that sort of pan out? Absolutely, that's the other side that you do need to, to consider. If it is on the staff member or, or the student's phone, what does the staff member have a procedure? You know, is he expected to put it into the to keep it on his phone, or is it supposed to go to a, some sort of central um, point in the college? My suggestion would be that it is going, it is being sent to the college, and the um, tutor is deleting it. A, you know, as soon as his purpose is finished. But again, you're you're take a step back from that if that is being permitted and if it is you, you should you know should the phone be password protected as a minimum should there be encryption there you know depending on what you're doing then these are questions that have to be agreed with the member of staff remembering that it's not only for the protection of the um, the student involved, you're actually trying to protect the member of staff as well from accusations and I think that staff members, um, they need to understand that, that, you know, mobile phones do get left here, there and everywhere, somebody else picks it up, no mobile protection on it, no, you know, not even a minimum password protection on it, um, somebody else picks it up and they find a whole lot of images of students on it. What is the conclusion they're going to, how is that going to look on the face of it is not very good for the lecturer until he explains it all. But meanwhile, rumours are rife, things have gone out of hand. So it's, you know, for the, the, the tutor's protection as well as for uh, the student and it's agreeing security procedures with your staff and making sure they realise it's for their protection as well as the, um, the college protection and okay. the student protection. Yeah, thank you, Betty. I mean, um, so it, it, is, it gets down to procedure, what's happening um, in, in your organisation. So there's just a, a quick question from Belinda. Um, is the BYOD toolkit for FE um, or is it for HE or for, for everybody really? because um, I'm thinking workplace learning as well. Right, the BYOD toolkit, the basic principles, the, uh, that's numbers one, two and three, the, the first three um, papers are for everyone. They are giving you the legal background and the legal risk scenarios. The, we aimed the um, the policy, the, the policy itself, we aimed that towards FE because that was where we perceived, you know, from our uh, the straw polls, etc., that we looked looked into, was that that is where the, the greater need is, and that is also where many universities have their own resources, um, planning, you know, IT subcommittees, etc., that are dealing with this area already. The call, a lot of the colleges out there don't have the luxury, so it is more aimed towards FE, but of course is free to adapt to suit other 
uh, institutions, other outfits where you don't or where you haven't started looking at this yet. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. Right, um, moving on, because I, I'm realising now that we're at the 12 o'clock point, I'll just take uh, two more minutes, I would say, um, is uh, just want to point you to some resources that the, um, the East Midlands RSC has put together. Um, I'll just put the link in the, uh, the chat pane so you can have a quick look, uh, either while I'm just chatting or look afterwards. Um, on our Moodle, moodle.rsc-em.ac.uk, um, you'll find, uh, as it is on that front page at the moment, links to bring your own device. Um, and on that, it, the, the resources that we've put together were from a technical event that we held at NFEC in Nottingham um, a couple of months ago. Uh, we had Microsoft in, representatives um, from sort of Apple um, uh, on the, the sort of uh, vendor side. Um, just legal in, we had uh, John Kelly in. Um, we had someone talking about 4G, because of course that's coming on the horizon, and that will change the, uh, the game of BYOD again. Um, ESIS coming in for security, and we had three showcases, um, two colleges, Lincoln and Malton, and one from Workplace Learning, um, Legat. And they were actually giving us uh, ideas on how they'd set up their network, how they were controlling um, the uh, resources, uh, tablets, what they were doing to access wireless, uh, and so on. So there's, there's loads of videos, presentation notes, and uh, links on there. So um, you know, please have a look and um, just tap into all the bits and pieces that you want. The, uh, the thing I would say um, now is just going on from there is many thanks to Betty. Um, and to Lindsay as well for popping in those URLs. Um, really appreciate you coming in. Um, thanks for Kevin in the background doing some bits and pieces to help me uh, sort of uh, moderate. Thank you very much for all coming along. Hopefully you found the session uh, useful. I'm sure you have. Our next BYOD event is looking more from the curriculum perspective. Um, so just get a quick plug in there. It's at Basford Hall in Nottingham, 14th of May. So it's just next week, and there may be a chance to uh, get booked on um, uh, sort of last minute. BYOD in the classroom, it's a morning session, I think. So it's just a half day. Uh, BYOD in the classroom, making the most of your learners' devices. So uh, you can book from that uh, link down the, the bottom, which is our page on our main GIST RSC website. Thanks again. Um, I hope to see you uh, very soon with some other sort of webinars. Um, thanks again to Betty and uh, her team. I really appreciate it. Have a good afternoon. All right. If you've got any more questions to ask, please send them through to ourselves at the RSC or direct to Betty. I'm sure she'll be pleased to um, uh, help out. Um, so thanks again. So uh, I think that's about it. Anybody else got anything to chip in? Okay, thanks then. Right, so to, to lead the session is just going up to uh, uh, Blackboard Collaborate and quit. Um, I'm on the Mac here, so it, it'll be something similar.